Okay, here we have a Viking professional wine cooler and we are told that it has a Freon leak. So we took this in on a trade and uh, it has three evaporator coils in it so we're going to take all the racks out, take the back wall off and make an attempt to find the leaky coil and uh, if you want to hang on and watch this video then we will proceed okay here all the shelves are out took off the back panels as you can see there's one two three coils in here they're all the same and uh, most likely one of them is leaking so I know there's some rust in here that we're going to have to fix. So my guess is that um, if you feel around the, the tubing, sometimes you can feel like a little oil. If you feel any residue, then you can assume that the leak is coming from that. It's usually these joints. Now these are copper evaporators. And this is all copper tubing, which is easy to fix. Uh, it's not like aluminum, which requires a little bit of skill to uh, to weld. And I don't see any oil in the trough. Usually, when you get a freon leak, it it leaks oil out with it, and it'll accumulate somewhere, and you'll see these little beads of water or something in the drain trough. I don't see that down there. I don't see that looks dry. My guess is that there's probably a leak down here. Uh, close to this um, lower coil and uh, that will be the, the first spot that I would look. So in the meantime, and by the way each those wires go, each one of these uh, evaporator uh, has a, a fan, there's a fan in, on the panel so you can see that there and there's three fans, three coils so it's three zone and we're going to clean this up. First we're going to try to find the leak because there's no sense cleaning this all up and painting this and getting it ready if we can't find the leak. However, it's very easy to convert this into a refrigerator if we had to, but I, my preference is to uh, repair it the way it was designed. So that will be our next step. We'll pressurize it. We have some nitrogen here and uh, we could pressurize the system and use a leak detector to see if we can find a leak. My guess is it's going to be down here on the bottom. Okay, thanks for watching. We'll continue on. Okay, we are now going to uh, do a little checking here. I took the top off. I put some R134A into the system because it was only about five pounds with the motor off so the end uh, the compressor off so we added some freon we're going to take our leak detector now and see if we can pinpoint anything in the meantime just a rundown on this machine is it's a three zone there's three switching valves one compressor you can see the three returns from the evaporator coils right here that's your supply off the liquid line so each one of those valves serves one of the evaporators inside. So now that we've uh, added some Freon to the system, we will check for leaks and if that doesn't work, then we'll add some nitrogen and build up the pressure and see if we can find anything. Okay, here's our leak detector. Let that warm up a bit. Okay, it's a little sniffer, it sniffs out the air or the surrounding areas. Most likely places for a leak are where the joints are. These are the joints that are sweated right in here, 
here's your suction line and your discharge line that come in up from your, your valves. And you have, you know, most likely place for a leak is wherever you see corrosion. Copper tubing does corrode. Okay. I think it's down here. Ah! Yep. Yep. We're getting a leak down here, I think. All right. It seems to me it's over here. Probably one of these joints, maybe in here somewhere. What we'll have to do next is get some soap bubbles or some kind of a liquid to see if we can actually pinpoint the leak. As I mentioned before, these are copper evaporators and they can be, and they can be soldered. And sometimes you'd be picking up uh, traces of Freon from the blown-in insulation that they use when they build these things. So, now the pressure has already gone down within 10 minutes. So, we're picking up traces up here. Over here. Okay. This is a line tap valve that we put on here to check the pressure. Okay, so we're going to shut it down now. We're going to get some soap bubbles and then we're going to try to uh, pinpoint the leak. Okay, so I'm going to use some citrus cleaner on here to see if I could find some bubbles. hardest thing is the you have to pinpoint the leak because you could be picking traces up mm -hmm. somewhere I see something right there see those bubbles right there there's the leak it's a corroded line you can see it's corroded if you look at it let me try to get in there a little closer you see the bubbles Right there. So the evaporator coil is good. It's just a little leak there. So we'll take this apart, clean it all out, and solder it. Let me just take a video. Okay, here it is. All right, it wasn't to take very long to find the leak. Okay, let's get to it. Okay, the rust situation here is pretty dire. Now we'll clean this all up and paint it and scrape all this rust off there. 
put some rust proof paint on there. Uh, the next thing we need to do is to remove this evaporator coil if we can. Looks like it's rusted in. You might have to drill it out. Just the looks like the bolts are stripped. Yeah, bolts are stripped. Okay, let's. Nope. Okay. Uh, we'll have to drill them out. Okay. I was able to get the the screws out of this evaporator. I didn't have just uh, with this tool here. This angled needle nose. I was able to get behind there and then get in there and, and turn as you can see the screws still in there, but I pulled it away from the wall. And I can hear the Freon coming out up here. It's pretty, pretty big leak. Oh yeah, big leak. There it is. I don't know if you can hear that. It's right here where the cap tube goes in. So what we're going to do we're going to remove this evaporator coil. We're going to clean all the rust up, repaint it, fix the evaporator. This, now this line is corroded, so we'll unsweat it here and put a new piece of tubing in here and re-sweat this in. You can see it's sweated in here and here, and then we'll put it back together. So you can hear the Freon coming out. And it's right. here somewhere okay we've um, emptied all the Freon out of the system and you can see some of our other videos that shows you how to do that with the proper equipment but for now we're going to cut this out I'm going to unsweat the suction side so I can put it back in uh, the, the evaporator back in the same way it came out and we'll just put an extension on here that goes up a little higher so we can solder that um, capillary tube in there. Okay, that's out. That's no good. All right, plan B. Okay, since we couldn't unsweat that piece of tubing, this is a quarter inch swag tool. We're going to put that in here and we're going to swag out the hole so we can get a piece of quarter inch copper tubing in there. Okay, that will give us room so now we have a quarter inch we could put a piece of quarter inch copper tubing in there and uh, prepare this and put it back in okay so we have a piece of quarter inch copper tubing this is refrigeration tubing not for water lines this is 80 thousandths wall thickness as opposed to that cheap stuff 
you buy at Home Depot and made in China that will not suffice here so we're going to put a little bit of a 90 degree on here and then we're going to solder this in and that's going to give us some extra room here to, to get the cap tube in there so we'll, the next thing we're going to do now is going to clean this up as much as we can and get this ready okay we want to clean out the inside of the tubing as much as we can so that the solder has something to bite into okay you can pretty much see in there it's nice and clean and we're going to take our tubing that we just made we're going to clean this Clean it as best you can. Cleaner the better. Okay. Now, this is what we use. Stay silv. And we use this silver solder. It's 50% or 56% silver. You can get this from the Harris. Um, any refrigeration supply house would have this. They also have. Um, rods that you can buy this in long rods I, I prefer to use the thinner more silver it flows a little faster okay I'm gonna dab this flux on here like this and I'm gonna work that in there Okay, and that, now we have to solder that in, and we'll do that next. Okay, okay, so I, I heated up the suction side here and pulled out this little piece of broken tubing that was in there so that we can now... Um, slide this right back on or we could also put an extension on here with another piece of tubing but that would create another joint and I'd rather see if this is going to work so let's let this cool down and then um, we'll see if it's going to fit and then we'll have to do some cosmetic work and uh, repair the rust and repaint and before we actually put the evaporator back in but it's pretty much the bulk of the repair okay let's move on okay here's the compartment all painted it's the best we could do considering uh, how rusted it was but we just put this um, paint over rust paint and cleaned it up a little bit so it looks a lot better than what it was and at least this paint will keep it from rusting any further so now the next thing we're going to do is re-sweat the evaporator coil then and, and mount it back to the back wall and start putting it back together and then we'll check it for leaks okay we're about ready to fit this evaporator in make sure your capillary tube here is not pinched in any way you should this is a pipe it's not a wire and freon has to flow through there so we're going to get this started here like so and then get the suction line on there okay now we're going to get our okay so we just sweat the lines in there and now before we mount the evaporator to the back wall we're going to pressurize the system and check for leaks and if there's no leaks then we can button this thing up stand by okay so what we're doing is we're pressurizing the system with R22 because at room temperature okay so here's an R 
uh, a pressure temperature chart in R22 at room temperature, which is probably it's about 80 degrees right now. It's 144 pounds. Our gauge is reading uh, 70, 80, so we'll open this up. See, it goes up past 120. Okay, so now we'll go inside and check for leaks. Okay, I'm using this bubble all purpose leak detection. Hope you can see that. I don't see anything here. Any bubbles, anything else. This is the other spot we soldered here. I don't see any leaks. That's good. So, next we'll uh, start to put it back together. Okay, we reassembled this uh, Viking Professional wine cooler, pressurized it, checked it out, and we still have a leak somewhere. It's not where we had it before. What I did was I pressurized the system. First I made this harness so that I could keep all three um, valves open at the same time and then I pressurized the system with R134A and the pressure came down so I knew I had another leak somewhere so I then opened up each valve one at a time with the compressor off so that we can pressurize both sides of the system and the middle evaporator the middle section and the lower section the lower section is where we repair the evaporator coil those two sections were holding the pressure but when we pressurized the top the pressure came down on the gauge so uh, we have another leak here in the upper evaporator and we're going to um, pressurize it again and see if we can find the leak and when we do, we will get back to you and move on. Okay, we are going to open the upper evaporator valve. We are going to fill it up with R134A. Okay, so now the pressure inside the upper evaporator is equal to the pressure inside the can. And since the refrigerator or the wine cooler is not running, the inside temperature should be the same as the outside temperature, which is the temperature of the shop. So I'm going to close this valve and I'm going to close the tank. And then we're going to watch it. It's at 72 or 3 pounds going to watch it and when it goes down as while we're waiting for it to go down we're going to take our leak detector which is right here and see if we can pick something up okay I removed the back plate and I'm picking up traces and I'm not sure if it's coming from the evaporator coil or if it's just from the insulation that is used when they build these things, they blow the insulation in. They blow the insulation in with Freon, or at least they used to. They don't do it anymore. But so now we, you know, we have 70, 70 pounds back pressure. Oop. So I don't, we don't know what that is. The best leak detector are bubbles. I, I don't really trust these electronic leak detectors as much as I do my eyes. When I see a bubble, I know I have a leak. And years ago, we used to use a leak detector called a halide, 
leak detector, and they're still available. It works off a small propane tank and siphons or sniffs the air around the leak area and then turns a different color when it goes through a heated diode. Not really picking up anything here, so we'll keep trying. Okay, so I went out to dinner and came back, and there's the pressure, zero. So we do have another leak in the system somewhere, and so now we're back to diagnostic mode. Okay, so I just pressurized this with nitrogen. Brought the pressure up to about 100 pounds pressure right there. And I hear the leak. And the leak's coming here. You can see that. Leaking right there. So now I have about 100 pounds pressure in the system. I'm going to let it sit overnight. Come back tomorrow morning. And if the pressure is still in there, then I know I don't have a leak. I know it was leaking from my hose all along. Okay. So we'll leave this for tomorrow. Okay, we have uh, monitored this wine cooler now for a couple of weeks and we came up with more leaks. So what I did, since I didn't have the, the right evaporator, I have to order it, I installed this Sub-Zero evaporator from a Model 561 using a, a Vulcan lock ring connector from the 3 8 aluminum to the 5 sixteenths copper and then I added an extension there. So we're going to test this out. We're going to charge it up and see how it works out while we're waiting for the, the proper uh, evaporator and heat exchanger to come in. All right, so I just want to let you see how that fit. It's a little bigger than the, um, the, the Viking evaporator coil and I had to trim these little pieces here, but that's what we did. Okay, this Viking wine cooler is done. It's all back together. It's uh, maintaining a temperature of 45 degrees in each zone. And so it's completed. Thanks for watching.